Welcome. In this video, we're going to show you some of the new features that we've added to Pro Landscape version 20. Now, first of all, in Image Editor, we've added a thousand new images to the image library. This takes the total number of images to over 12,000. Now, when you open up Image Editor, you're going to notice there's a new tab over in the workspace. It's called the Clear View tab. What the clear view option allows us to do is whenever we have an area such as this area here where you have a lot of plants compacted into one space, what you can do is you can use the clear view to easily select objects uh, that are close to the background here. Now if I select an, a layer such as the shrub layer and I select the enable clear view, you'll see here that what it does is it, it makes the shrubs semi-transparent. Also, if I try to click on those shrubs, it will not allow me to click on them because they're frozen or locked. So now if I want to go over here to the flowers, to the cone flowers, I can easily grab those and make adjustments to those without interference of the shrub. Now if I want to go ahead and turn off the clear view option, those shrubs come back and I can select and move those shrubs. Okay, now one other thing that we've changed is we've changed the way we move objects within layers. Now let's go over to our Objects tab in the Workspace, which is the second tab over here, and you'll see a list of all of the objects that you have on the project. Now what you do is if you have an object selected, you'll see that it becomes selected in the Objects tab here. Now if you were to select an object in the Objects tab, it also selects the object on the paper or on the project over here. Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to move an item uh, uh, forward, such as this barberry. I want to move it up in front of the daylilies. Now, in previous versions, the way we would have moved this is we would have went up to the Move Forward button, and we would have clicked on that several times. And what it would do is it would just step one layer at a time until it gets in front of all of the plants that we want it to be in front of. Okay, now what we can do is we can still click on that button, but when I do that, watch the barberry here. What it does is it jumps several spaces there. With just a single click, it jumps several spaces. And the reason it does that is now it's only looking at the plants that are in the proximity of this area. It's not really even considering the plants that are over here. So it's going to be able to move forward and move back much quicker than it did previously. Okay, something else that we've added to version 20 is the ability to modify the background image, such as rotating the background image. We found there's a lot of users starting to use their their camera phones to take their photos to bring them into the program and they're realizing that they're either sideways or upside down so we've made it easy to rotate those images by going up to the file menu and then we'll go to modify background and that brings up a window here where I can rotate the background left or right I can also change the brightness the contrast the sharpness and the color of the background image Okay, now one of the biggest features that we've added to Pro Landscape version 20 has to do with the companion app for the iPad and the Android devices. What we used to do is we used to have you go in and add items to your favorites and then you would have to send those commonly used items in your favorites over to the tablet so that you would have plants to design with. Now if you needed more items in your favorites from the previous versions, what you would have to do is you'd go back over to your PC into Image Editor and add those new items to your favorites and then send that favorites file back over to the tablet so that you'd have them. Okay, now in version 20 what you can do is you initially send the favorites over to the tablet. Now if you want additional items in your favorites and you have a wireless connection on your tablet you can simply go out to our web server and browse the image library and add any of the 12,000 images from our library onto that project. It will also ask you if you want to add that object to the favorites, so you really never need to go back over to Image Editor to send more favorites over to your projects. Okay, let's go ahead and jump over to Planner and we'll show you a few of the new features there. 
Now the first new option that we're going to show you here is the Dimension Segments option. Now this works with things such as pavers and foundation walls, but what we can do here is we can simply right click on the object and we can go down to Dimension Segments and it adds the dimension lines or the dimension uh, values to each of the line segments like so. Another tool that we've added is called the Insert Poly Tool and what that tool does is it will allow us to take a shape and overlay it on top of a, a shape such as a paver or a grassy area and then we can deduct that shape from the, the larger shape. Now an example of how to use that is let's say we have a paver patio and we want to put a fire pit on top of that but we don't want to calculate the pavers underneath the fire pit. The way that we do this is we draw in our paver and then I'm going to go up to the draw menu and go back to pavers and select elliptical and then I'll just drag a circle on top of my paver like so. Okay now if I right click on that circle and go to insert poly okay now what it wants me to do is to click on the outer shape that I'm going to deduct this circle from so I'll just click on the perimeter here now when I click off of it and click back to it you'll see that when I move that off the pavers are no longer shown underneath uh, where I'm going to later place a fire pit symbol Okay, so it should automatically uh, uh, calculate the correct amount for me there. Okay, another thing that we've added is we've added a new technique to the uh, edging tool. I'll go over here to the draw edging tool and I have my endpoint snap on. I'm, I'm just going to go in and click in here and I'm going to do a, a piece of edging all the way over to this corner and then I'll right click to set that down. Now if I want to change the curvature at all, I can, I can do that by uh, double clicking on it and editing, editing the vertice points like so. Okay. Now once I have those down there, I'm going to go up here to the edit bar and I'm going to change the width of the edging. Let's go ahead and change that to an 8 inch width and hit enter and it gives me a solid black line of edging. Now what we've done different here is we now have the ability if we right click on that edging to select make edging fillable. And what that does is it gives me a frame around that edging and then it gives me a, uh, a hatch pattern that would simulate that we have uh, bricks in there with uh, mortar lines in between the bricks. So it's a much uh, better looking uh, piece of edging. Now whenever I use this I can still fill that edging with uh, mulch. Uh, by using the uh, Easyscape Mulch Fill Tool. And we'll go over here and we'll click on that and it should trace that line out perfectly. Okay, now in version 20 we've also added several new tools uh, to the Legend Tool. Now uh, previously in uh, Planner we had added a Fill Symbol option. I believe we added that this in version 18. But what we can do is we can right click on a symbol and select fill symbol and then just select a color and then I'm going to do it for all occurrences and I'll click OK. And what that does is it takes that symbol and it fills it in with a nice gradient color fill. Okay. Now previously whenever we would have generated a legend on these uh, symbols, even though they had fills on them, they would have just shown the standard CAD symbols without the fills. So now when I generate a legend, okay, it does show the symbols with the fill effects applied to them. Okay, now let's go ahead and delete that out and I'm going to regenerate a legend. We've also added a couple new options here, such as we can now display the plant height and the plant width within the legend. We also have an option to show just plants or just show non-plants such as irrigation uh, heads and that type of thing. And finally uh, on Planner version 20 we also uh, have updated to the real DWG 2014 which allows us to bring in uh, AutoCAD files uh, compatible with the uh, 2014 uh, version of AutoCAD 
and they should bring those in at scale. Now those are a few of the uh, features that we've added to uh, version 20 of, of uh, Pro Landscape. We have a complete list of the new features uh, listed on our website. And thank you for listening.